I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to the series for IB students. In this particular video, we are going to discuss 10 practice questions for our IBT grade 8 students. It will help them to prepare for the test. Let us go through the 10 questions taken in this particular set. There are many such sets and you can always send an email to get a PDF copy of these test papers. So here's the very first question which is dependent on combinations using four letters. Then question number two is finding or relating with mean of the data given. You have to find a missing value. Question number three is related with the percentage question. Question number four is solving an equation which has fractions in it. Question number five is on discount. Six will analyze a pattern to find the result. Seven will solve a linear system. Eight now, that's the application question. Question number nine, finding area from the given graph. And question number 10 is geometry. Isosceles triangle, we'll find the angle. Let's begin with the solutions starting from the very first question. A very important concept also will be given to you so that you can immediately answer such questions within no time. How many combinations of different words can be formed with letters P, Q, R, and S? These words may not have any meaning. So when I say, so you could form like P, Q, R, S, right? And then the strategy here is to look into the other forms. We can keep first p q as kind of fixed and flip this off right with r we have s and then with s we can also have r s and s r and then we could bring r to this side and have q s and p r s q right so the second position now could be taken by s so we have p s and then we are left with q r and p s r q so likewise you saw that we could have made six one two three four five six starting with p right so starting with p we made six similarly starting with q also we can make six with r also six S also we can make 6. So 6 times 4 gives us 24 and therefore the answer should be D, right? So I should mark D out there. Generally, how do we solve this question? So there is an alternate way which I should be discussing with you now. So P, Q, R, S. So we have four positions to fill in. Now in the first position, I have four options, right? I could put P, Q, R, or S. So I have four options to fill the very first position. Once I choose one of them, in that case, I'm left with three numbers to fill. Well, three letters, and then two, and then one. And if I multiply them, four times, three times, two times, one, we get the number 24. And therefore, 24 is the right answer. Perfect. Now, many such combinations always give us this kind of a result. And I'll teach you one notation which is called 4 factorial. Multiplying 1, 2, 3, 4, numbers till 4 hmm, gives you 4 factorial. So, so, this answer could also be written as 4 factorial. Well, that is an added information. Let's move on to question number two and answer that one. 
average percent marks for Rohan in five tests is 76%. Scores for the first four are 64, 70, 86, and 90. Find the marks for the fifth test. Well, when I say that the average is 76, it means what? 76 in all, right? So 76 times 5 becomes the total. 5 times 6 is 30. 3, 35, and 3. 380 should be the total, right? All the 5 combined should give me total of 380 marks. Here, if we add these given to us, what do I get? The missing is what was the fifth mark. You get the whole idea. You can now do the calculation and figure it out, right? So if I add them up, 6 plus 4, 10, 1, right? So 10, 18, and 18 and 7, 25, and 6, 31. So 310. So if I take away 310, what is left is the answer. That should be the mark for the fifth test. So that all five numbers when combined, will give you 380 as the total. That is what it means when we say that the five test average is 76%. So I hope this part is absolutely clear. Let's move on to question number three. So well, in case you want to practice more, you can always send an email on globalmathinstitute at gmail.com and have a PDF to practice. Question number three here is, a number reduced by 20% becomes 36. Find the number. Correct. So a number reduced by 20%, so 20% less than the number is 36. What is the number? One way could be that out of each given number, you could reduce 20%. Right. For example, 66, 10 percent is 6.6. 20 will be 6.6 .6 times 2. Well, we are looking for an even value, so decimals don't really work well, correct? Similarly, if I try 55, 10 percent is 5, 20 will be 10. So if I reduce 10, I get 45, not 36. With 45, 10% is 4.5, and 20 will be twice 4.5, which is 9. And that should give me 36 as my answer. So this is one way of solving the problem, especially when it is given as a multiple choice question. Makes sense, right? So well, that was one way of doing it. So it says a number reduced by 20% becomes 36. Means 80% of the number is 36. You get the whole idea. So the alternate way is the number is x, then x times 0 0.8 is 36. So the number x basically is 36 divided by 0 0.8. That is another way of doing it. So you could think like 360 divided by 8 and then get the answer. So that is a logical way of doing it. So I'm showing you both the approaches since sometimes one works better than the other. So I hope that makes sense, right? So let's move on to the next question, which is question number 4. 3x minus 1 over 5 equals to x by 2. For what values of x is the above equation true? You can always pause the video, answer, and then check with my solution perfect. So that really means we need to solve the equation. So let's do it. So we have 3x minus 1 over 5 equals to x over 2. To solve the equation with fractions, cross multiply is the best strategy. So let's multiply with 2 the left hand side and 5 with x open 6x minus 2 equals to 5x 
bring together the variables on one side, right, and the constant on the other side. So this is x. So x is equal to 2. So we get c as our answer. Well, the other way could have been substitute check what works, what does not work, right. Solving is a better strategy in this particular case. Question number five. Cost of a shirt is $1.60. Find its cost after 20% discount. So once again, 60 is the actual cost. After 20% really means you pay how much? You pay 80% of the value. So 60 times 0.8 is your answer or you can say 60 6 times 8 right 0.8 means you understand right which is 48 so the option d in this case becomes the right option so we have couple of questions in this particular set with percent and i hope now you must have understood how do we solve these questions great let's move on to the next problem which number comes next in this number pattern? So, which number comes next in this number pattern? 3, 5, 9, 17, 33. So, think about it. How do we get from 3 to 5 and then to 9 and then to 17 and so on? Well, 5 is 1 less than double, right? Of 3. 9 is also 1 less than twice 5 and 17 is 18 minus 1 right so so it is 33 so the next number should be 33 times 2 minus 1 right so 66 minus 1 which is 65 correct so 65 becomes the right option so i hope you understand the strategy by which we came to the solution this is kind of important at this stage to understand let's move on to question number 7 Given the equation 2x plus 3y equals to 11, find value of x for y equals to 7. So we are given the equation 2x plus 3y equals to 11. Find x. We don't know what x is, but we know what y is. So we'll substitute y as 7 and calculate, right? So we have 2x plus, this is 21, right? So 2x equals to 11 minus 21 which is minus 10 and therefore x is minus 10 over 2 or minus 5 so option b in this case is the right option so i hope you're getting it right not so difficult here is question 8 two more to go after this a gym charges a one-time registration fee of $20, $25, and $1.15 per month for ongoing membership. What are yearly charges in dollars? Well, that means 25 is fixed, right? And to this, you add 15 times 12, since there are 12 months in a year, right? So we get 25 plus 12 times 5 is 60. So when you add 6, you get 180, and you can add 25 to this, right, and get your answer, right. So, so 205, option A is the right option. Second last question, question 9 for us. Find area of the triangle formed by the line and the coordinate axis in unit square. So we want to find area of this portion. So that means we need to read from the given graph the x and y intercept. y intercept is at minus 2, the x intercept is at 4. So that means this is a right angle triangle since x and y axis always cross at right angle. So base times height divided by 2. So it is half of 4 times 2. Area is always positive. So, we have to write a positive value is equal to 2 cancels, we are left with 4. So, it is 4 units squared. So, that's easy. 
It's important to read the values properly and then get the answer. The last question here is an isosceles triangle has an angle of 62 degrees, which is the other possible angle? Now, with isosceles triangles, what we could have is let me just draw one here, two here, rather, and see the possibilities. Has an angle of 62, right? It could be this angle of 62, where these two are equal, or we could have equal 62 angles, right? Where we have to find the third angle. So these are the two scenarios. So it could be either way. So let's try out both, right? So in this case, is given as 62, not I wrote 60, 62. So if we are saying case 1, then all well, the 3 is 180. So it is 180 minus 62. That will give me sum of 2. And when I divide that by 2, I get one angle. So let's do it, right? So from 10, if I take away 2, I get 8. 7 take away 6 is 1. Right, so 118 divided by 2. So 2 times 5 is 10 and 9 is 18. So we have that option. Option B becomes the right option for us. So with that, we complete our test practice set for IB students grade 8. I hope you find it interesting and useful. In case you want to really practice, you can always send an email on globalmathinstitute at gmail.com, subscribe to our playlist and get a free PDF to practice. Thank you and all the best.